Okay, hello everyone. My name is Bill, uh, Bill Flidoy. I'm the Chair of Economic Development and Employment Committee. Uh, the meeting uh, is now called to order. It's being recorded for public access and archiving in accordance with the New York State Open Meeting Law. In the practice of CB2 to conduct remote meetings with all committee members, cameras on. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, public attendees are also encouraged to leave their cameras on, particularly if you're given the floor to speak. All attendees, please keep your microphone muted when you're not speaking to maintain appropriate discussion and voting process. I will make it known when and which topics are open for comment by committee members, board members at large, and the general public. If you have questions that fall outside of the public comment time, please type your questions in the chat panel and we will discuss them as time permits. You may also email the district office at any time outside of this, these meetings. We are committed to providing access to all of our neighbors, regardless of physical ability or limitations. If you require accommodation or assistance for full participation, please contact the district office 72 hours before any public meeting. Okay, the committee uh, secretary, Kate Gilman, will now conduct roll call. Hey everyone, we've got Chair Bill Planoy. Hey, Bill. Vice Chair Denise Peterson. I don't see Denise. Oh, I think Denise might have just popped on. Denise, you there? Yeah, I think she's still cycling in. Okay. Kate Yearwood Young. Ciro Scala. Uh, Cyril is not, not here right now. Maisha Morales. Here. I see you, Maisha. Hey. Latrell Masso. Here. Yeah. I hear you, Latrell. And we're all set. Denise, I see you there. Okay, excellent. Okay. Uh, with that, uh, roll call. Um, may I have an adoption of the motion of the agenda, please? Motion, please, wrap. Okay, uh, Ms. Gilman and Ms. Peterson. Okay, excellent. Okay, uh, hopefully you all had a chance to read the minutes from the previous uh, session. If you did not, we'll probably review them later on. Okay, and with that, uh, we have a presentation tonight and a Q&A, okay, from the Brooklyn Navy Yard, the Economic Development Corporation. And this is about, this is about the Workforce Development Initiatives. Uh, presenting will be Nikki Evans, the Senior Vice President for Workforce Development and Education. Nikki, the floor is now yours. Oh, Ethan, so good to see you. <laughs> Okay, I see you have a plus one. Awesome. I do have a plus one and we're going to have to, I'm going to have to go off camera and just listen in a little bit when someone uh, gets to eat and go to bed. Um, but <laughs> really happy to see all of you and I'm really happy you'll hear from Nikki tonight. So, so it was, thank you for letting us see your child. <laughs> Such a beauty. Mm -hmm. He's my warm up act, you know. <laughs> all right, Nikki, this is hard to follow, but. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Nikki Evans. My name is Nikki Evans. Um, I am the new uh, Senior Vice President for Workforce Development and Education here at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Um, I started at the top of the year, so January 3rd here on the yard. Um, and my background in workforce development um, includes um, a number of um, opportunities in um, institutions in the city, as well as um, some time spent in industry. Before coming to the Navy Yard, I spent about seven years as the director for the Office of Workforce Partnerships um, with CUNY. So I sat within the central office and I focused in on what I like to call career transitions, which is where um, we work with our career services, we work with our workforce development teams and things like that. So that's people graduate out of degree programs and out of our occupational training programs, um, there are pathways for them to transition into careers, occupations and jobs. Um, I spent a good amount of my time working um, with industry and understanding what industry needed while at the same time, balancing that and helping industry to understand um, the populations that we were serving and helping them to see the value and the talent that we had um, that was coming out of CUNY. Um, and coming to the yard has been amazing for me. So I'm very excited. I worked with them a great deal. Um, when I was at CUNY, um, doing various workforce development events, um, whether it's career exploration with our students or our students participating in the internship program. Um, so I'm just happy to be here. 
Um, I am so excited to be on such an amazing place. I'm going to share my screen. Hold on, let me see if I can do this. Nope, uh, good grief. Let me take this out for a second. Oh, come on. Let's see here. Zoom, you should like me because I've always been good to you. There we go. Share. And we're going to change this over to full. And I'm going to go back. So, okay. there we're we good. go. <laughs> so, what I like to tell folks um, the yard is very unique. And the fact that the yard has elements of the major components of the um, city's workforce development system here under one roof. Um, we have our K through 12 programming with the STEAM Center, um, but we're also restarting our own um, school-based programming um, with tours and other activities. Um, well, we actually have restarted that as well through our public programs. Um, we serve college students through our internship program, our um, most well-known summer internship program, but we also offer smaller fall and um, spring internships, as well as our real estate fellows. Um, we are expanding our adult training portfolio and doing more work around occupational and vocational training of the yard, as well as um, our employment center. So collectively together, these um, pieces make a really great continuum of opportunity for folks in our community. So I'm gonna give, oh, forgive me. I'm gonna give some quick updates um, in regard to, you know, what where we are with these pieces. If there's particular information that's not here, feel free to ask me questions or inquiries about it. Um, if I don't have the answer just yet, I'll definitely go out and find the answer for you and report back and make sure it gets shared. So starting with our STEAM Center, uh, which is our K-12 piece, um, we have this year, we've had a 14% increase in enrollment to 340 students for this academic year, which is very, very exciting. It continues to grow um, and we feed about, it is fed from about eight, um, high schools uh, within the surrounding areas. Um, it launched a new CTE approved pathway in cybersecurity. Um, for those who visited, I'm quite sure you saw their IT program. And so what happens is in the first year that IT program is you know, all around IT, IT fundamentals and everything like that. Then in year two of um, the STEAM program, it splits. Um, and so now that split it includes a pathway for cybersecurity, as well as a full stack software development pathway. Um, we just had their spring showcase on April 27th. For those of you who made it out, it was an amazing showcase. The kids were both cute, adorable, and brilliant, um, showing off their various projects that they've been working on for the year. Um, both the junior students and the senior students were able to show, up to show their um, projects. Um, the seniors were in the morning and the junior students were in the afternoon. Um, they had their largest attendance so far. Um, last year, they had about 130 people attend the public showcase. This year, they had roughly about 200 people attend the public showcase. So they're very excited about that. Our BNYDC internship program, um, our flagship for the internship program is the summer program and it is one of the most popular programs. Um, we got 971 applications, which beat the last year's record of 954. Um, and that's for 90 paid 2023 summer internships. These internships are paid from BMYDC. So BMYDC subsidizes these internships and then students are placed with departments within BMYDC or they're placed um, with businesses on the yard. So um, if a student is interested, for example, in engineering or whatnot, we would try to match them with an engineering opportunity on the yard. 59 yard businesses and BNYDC departments um, asked to host interns. And again, it's a range of different opportunities that are being offered. Everything from marketing to business to um, mechanical engineering, 
to um, software development. It's, it's such an amazing range of opportunities for the students. Um, we're in the final part of the placement for those. So we're doing the matching, the meeting with um, businesses um, and doing like, um, it's not quite an interview, but it is an interview because um, we did some vetting ahead of time. Um, and then we start sending out acceptances and everything. So far we have about 20 acceptances and the process continues. We expect to have all the slots filled um, this round and um, that'll be finalized probably around um, mid-May. So I'm gonna stop here to see if there's any questions on those two pieces. I'm going to suggest that you continue with the uh, presentation and we'll ask questions at the end of the presentation. Okay, great. That's so helpful. Um, the next program that we have is our Real Estate Fellows Program. This is the newest program. It is designed um, with, the gov with Governor's Island. And the purpose of the Real Estate Fellows Program is to bring diversity to commercial real estate in the city. Um, like many industries in the city, the uh, commercial real estate industry um, does not have a lot of people of color, does not have women. And so this particular fellowship is designed to attract those folks in, give them an opportunity to get experience in commercial real estate, and then hopefully move on to um, job opportunities um, within companies throughout the city. This program is a little bit different than the internship in that it is a year-long paid commercial real estate fellowship. It starts off with a full-time internship over the summer for eight weeks, and then it transitions into a part-time um, job um, for uh, about 30 weeks or so. Um, the fellows are assigned to different departments, both on Governor's Island and in the Navy Yard, where they learn about aspects of commercial real estate. Um, on the yard, it tends to be uh, property management, design and planning, um, some construction, um, a, a Governor's Island, um, they do a lot of planning um, and working with them to problem solve about like the placement of a carousel or something like that. So this year saw the job center um, actually open back up fully. Um, the previous year we had roughly about 600 folks who um, came to the center um, in 2021. Um, in 2022, 2023, we have more than doubled the number of people who are currently using the center year over year. Um, year to date, we're at 1,350 visitors, unique visitors for the fiscal year. So far, we have 101 placements. Um, what we've seen an increase in the average range year over year by 18%. 32% uh, of the positions uh, offered here have health benefits. This is something that we're tracking with an eye toward working with our um, business development services to increase. 80% of them are full-time and permanent, and 44% were from our catchment, were catchment area residents. So these are the folks who um, are in 11 of the closest zip codes. Ethan, I might need help here in explaining this. <laughs> 11 of the closest zip codes to the Navy Yard. Um, and then I believe some of those are hyper-local. Um, we also this year um, continued with our uh, CNC training. Uh, CNC operators are in demand in the city and a variety of different um, companies, organizations, um, whether it was construction, MTA, um, design houses, and things like that. These are the folks that operate the machines that make tools and parts and all those types of things. And so seeing that opportunity, especially on the yard where we have a number of companies that employ CNC operators, um, we started last year expanding a pilot around CNC operators to include regular courses where folks can take the training for free. We pay for them to um, get their certifications and then we help them connect to opportunities. Um, some of the people who participate in the training are actually incumbents. So they're already working in positions on the yard, but by completing this training, um, they're able to either ask for a higher wage from their current employer or move on to another job on the yard that, of course, would pay more for the new skills they require. Uh, this year, we'll be adding to this training uh, portfolio um, an AutoCAD CAM, which is the um, training, which is the CNC software piece of this um, to help upskill existing CNC operators. 
So that layering that on to um, a CNC, uh, someone who has CNC gives them much more flexibility because not only are they operating the machine, they're able to then, you know, identify, load the dimensions, create the dimensions, um, program it into the machine um, themselves, which of course adds value and helps them to increase their um, early wage. So that's the current state of the workforce initiatives that um, we have here. Um, I've been helping folks to kind of understand that we do more than the STEAM Center and EC, because I think historically that is what people have thought of us for, but we're definitely elevating our internship program. We're definitely, definitely elevating our adult training program um, simply because we recognize that there takes a lot of different approaches to helping folks to connect to opportunities on the yard um, and to also you know build a career. I think there's no silver bullet. It's like different steps layer onto them, layer onto each other to help folks to get to that economically sustainable job or career. And so we have those we have those different steps um, currently and we continue to build those out. That's the end of my presentation. <laughs> I, I was just about to ask you, Nikki, if that was the end of the presentation. Okay, excellent. Uh Nikki, can you take down the um your uh uh, what's called your slides so that I can actually see the committee? Yeah, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Good. Is it down? I can't. Yes, tell. it's down. Yes, it is down. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Nikki. That was a, uh, an informative uh, presentation for us to have. Uh, we wanted to have an update on what's going on, and you've given us that update. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, one of the things, one of the things that's going on right now is um, the community board. What we like to do is we like to, we had a very strong working relationship with the uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard, and we mm -hmm. like to continue with that uh, relationship. One okay. of the things that one of the things that is happening on a regular basis is whenever we get applications in other committees, and there's job opportunities. We mm -hmm. always suggest that they reach out, okay, to the Brooklyn Navy Yard to, to to actually list those job opportunities so that when applicants come to you, they have other options other than within the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Is there anything else we can do to help help accelerate that or expand that? So let me make sure I understand. Um, are you referring to companies in the yard who may be coming to you guys for something and then they have job opportunities and you send them to the yard? Or are you talking about companies outside of the yard? Companies outside of the yard. Okay. So primarily, to my knowledge, we've always really worked with companies inside the yard. I haven't seen a ton of um, job opportunities that have been posted by companies outside of the yard. Um, so I don't, I don't quite know. Do you, um, I don't quite know where the, those are landing, to be sure. Um, and when you think, and when you're talking about expanding, are you talking about expanding job opportunities or um, just expanding the reach for those companies? You know, I think this is something that we've always done. Okay, I'm not sure. That's why I'm asking you now if this is something that you actually do. Okay, mm -hmm. it sounds like to me that that's not the way it actually works, that people actually come to the Brooklyn Navy Yard to actually find jobs at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Yes, so that's primarily what we've been doing. Um, so when I came on, so I came on in January, I don't know if historically, that's why I was trying to get a sense of if maybe there was a program or something that I just don't know about. Um, but when I came onto the yard, we had roughly about 200 job orders um, in the system when I came on um, that we've been working, all of those job orders um, trace back to a company that was existing on the yard. Okay, excellent, thank you. Okay, I've noticed also one of the things you mentioned too is, this is interesting, you had 971 applicants applying for work at the Brooklyn Navy Yard or for summer uh, uh, internships and only 90 mm -hmm. were actually accepted. That's 10%. It's, is there a reason why there was only 10% is because of skill levels or something along those lines? What was the actual issue with that? So it's not an issue. It's really about capacity and resources. So the Navy Yard pays for the interns themselves. And so we spent roughly about $350,000 a year to support these interns. So they work full time. Um, we pay them an hourly wage. We provide training and other things. And so right now, the Navy Yard only has the 
its own financial resources enough to support about 90 over the summer, about 40 in the fall, and 40 in the spring. So that's just that's just the limit of our resources at this point. Beautiful. This leads right into my next question. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, on a regular basis, um, the uh, community board too, what we do is we do statement of district needs. Mm -hmm. And we actually reach out to the city and ask them where we would like to have funding or support. Mm -hmm. Okay. To different, you know, activities, organizations, and things that we believe is, would be uh, uh, fortuitous for the individuals within our district. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything we can do to help send funds or support to the Brooklyn Navy Yard when we do the district statement of needs? So I definitely think um, around our internships and training, um, we could definitely have support there just because um, we, want to, we want to expand the training, um, the training portfolio that we have. So the way that we think about it is um, that we know that there's a lot of talent in the surrounding neighborhoods. Um, they don't many of them don't yet have the skills that would make them um, able to have some of the jobs on the Navy Yard. A lot of the jobs on the Navy Yard that pay well are technical jobs, are jobs that require you know, specific skill sets and things like that. And so we see the, our training as a connector um, to help folks get those skills so they can transition into um, these well-paying jobs. So definitely um, training dollars, of course, are needed. Um, with internships, um, we're, we're particularly interested in expanding the internship opportunities for college students. So we do internships a little bit differently than um, the way traditional businesses might do those. So we don't, we don't consider um, some of the um, things that people might consider, like our, our students don't have to have a super high GPA. Um, they need to be Brooklyn residents. Um, we look at their passion. Um, we're okay if they've never had an internship before. Like a lot of internships require folks to have um, had an internship before they can get an internship. We don't require that. Um, what we're looking for is their passion, their willingness to work hard, and an interest in some of the work that's happening on the yard. So if they want to work in marketing, they're interested in working in marketing and tech company. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Right now, this is what we're doing with like internships and SYEP and all of those things, but we're particularly interested in this because that's where the need is, um, especially for black and brown students, especially because a lot of us don't get internships right away. And so if we can be the first internship that helps them get the next internship at a bigger company or the company that they want to work, on, work for, we're happy to do that. Okay, so let me ask you a question, a little more specific, a little targeted. Okay, what city funded programs do you currently work with within the Navy Yard? So right now um, we are working with SYEP um, to see, to like pilot out a small cohort of SYEP students in the yard. Um, SYEP is unique in the fact that we're a manufacturing zone. So we have to be um, a little bit more selective with, with when working with SYEP because we can't really have anyone 18 or under, excuse me, younger than 18, because many of our companies by OSHA regulations can't really have anyone under the age of 18 on their factory floors and everything like that. So we're, so we're working with them to kind of identify um, how we might be able to work with them on a larger scale, but this is um, primarily a pilot this year. Um, in terms of like city funded programming in my shop, I don't, I don't work with a ton of city funded program, but we are active in like the mayor's talent and workforce development cabinet where we're collaborating more to see and understand like how the Navy Yard and its uniqueness can connect to the broader um, city landscape in terms of workforce development. Okay, anything else? Uh, Cause we're here to help. So I've been here, so I, I like to tell people I've been here um, just four months. We've started strategic planning. Um, one of the things that we're really focused on this year, um, Ethan will probably be sending you a lot of missives and like information um, about upcoming events is reconnecting and re-engaging across the board. We're doing that with our tenants. We're doing that with the community. Um, so we will be hosting more consistent events, more consistent um, career services, um, school, staff career services, more consistent career fairs, and we'll be um, adding a, adding some extra hours 
um, for those who like work during the day. Um, so we're gonna add like a, a late night hours and we're gonna start with every other Saturday to make it a little bit more accessible for people to be able to take advantage and see what opportunities are here on the yard. Um, as we do this um, strategic planning and things like that, I'll have a better sense of what the long-term need is. Right now, we're trying to kind of recalibrate everyone um, back to being fully in office, back to like regular engagement. As you, as you know, COVID was massively disruptive to direct service. Okay, understood. I've been monopolizing the uh, conversation right now. I have a few other hands raised. I'll let my co-chair now uh, ask a question. <laughs> Denise? Thank you, Mr. Flanoy. Good evening, everyone. Um, one of the questions I have really uh, goes with uh, something that Mr. Flanoy mentioned. Over the many years, um, the five, seven years or so, it seems that I recall, mm -hmm. the employment office was very much connected to the community and um, it's it it almost kind of seems that there's an there's an absence there so when you're moving to um, you know complete that strategic plan that uh, that would be one of the things because if there's no connection and there's no outreach then there's I don't know what else is left um, in terms of information getting to the community at large for the purpose of the community board, um, we would most often receive sheets of job opportunities um, that would be brought to the meeting. And for those who are public um, attendees, they can pick up you know, a, a copy. Those who want to take a few and post somewhere. So my question is, and, and maybe you, made some mention of it is there any such thing anymore or that's not done anymore um or it's done on a particular you know bi-weekly monthly how does information get into community about what is uh, information that the the employment office uh, at the at the brooklyn navy have to to offer so with the Employment Center, because of COVID, a lot of stuff moved online. So if you go to the BNY website, you will see a list of the job, of the open job opportunities we have there. We actually started to grow out our mailing list so that we can uh, email folks um, up-to-date job announcements and things like that, um, because people weren't coming in and we couldn't go out. So the connectivity, I think you're speaking to regarding, you know, being able to do outreach and things like that, a lot of that was curtailed um, because of COVID. And that's what we're trying to um, build back up um, over this next year, because we know that that needs to happen. So that's why we're looking into the longer hours. That's why we are, um, you know, figuring out a regular schedule for career fairs and opportunities and things like that. Um, identifying um, community partners and things like that we want to deepen relationships with for referrals both to us for folks that may be looking for work but also to them for folks that may be needing services so this is the stuff that we're doing right now but i honestly think um, that disconnection came from covid nikki can i just add to that too um one i want to focus focus on the fo forward facing as Nikki's saying as we're going forward and re-engaging here and reapplying ourselves. Um, Nikki wasn't with us uh, at the beginning of COVID and I can just, as a person who was, I can speak to the fact that it was hugely disruptive, not just from a workforce development perspective, but from a mission, the entire mission of the Navy Yard. We, at the beginning, we pivoted to PPE. We were making sure our businesses could work together and they produced 10.4 million pieces of PPE uh, in the first few months of, of COVID. But obviously that takes a little bit away from your workforce development efforts when you're focusing on that um, in mm -hmm. the crisis mode. And then coming out of that, then you start to see the big crisis in small businesses across the board, and we had 500 of them. So we were very focused on making sure the businesses at the yard could connect with um, PPP loans and, and other things that allowed them to stay on their feet. Um, because without those businesses, there is no economic development, there is no workforce development. Um, so 
uh, and then I think, uh, Ms. Peterson, you made a very good point about paper being lost. You know, in COVID, we kind of stopped the fly, maybe some more flyering and some opportunities where people could take those away. Um, but we can definitely get that to you in paper form. And as, as Nikki said, I think going forward, growing the mailing list so people are getting that in their inbox um, every couple of weeks and they can share that um, out to an even bigger audience than we're able to, to hit by ourselves. So we appreciate your help in, in that going forward. And if there's well, I would say, I would just say, and I'm going to let somebody else, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say, and if there's particular places. I, I, I would just say, and we can move on from this so other people can. I, I, you, you kind of went in and out, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think there's a delay. We, I, I'll ask the question to you offline. <laughs> okay. Um, right, so I'm just, I just want to, I, I just want to, Hold on, hold on one second, Mr. Funoy. Let me, if I can just finish my my thought and then I'm going to turn it over so somebody else can ask questions. I'm not sure that perhaps maybe not understanding what I'm asking. And yes, we can talk about that offline. Um, and I, because I'm not sure that there was, I'm not clear on the response based on what I'm asking or trying to ask. Um, so we can talk about that offline. At another time, um, that's that, that's fine as well. I think there might be a slight delay. Yeah, there is a slight delay. Okay. okay. All right. So, Chrissy. Sure. Um, just out of curiosity, when you do the outreach, okay, do you have an idea of what type of response you're getting from your outreach? Is it uh, 1%, 2%, 10%. I'm just kind of curious on that because maybe we can find a more effective way to do outreach if the actual email outreach is not getting the type of returns or, or the type of um, outreach or uh, contacts that we need to get out there. Because a lot of people, unfortunately, do not have access to the internet as Denise is uh, actually you know, mentioning. So um, since I've been here, the most consistent um, outreach that I could analyze was our email outreach. And so our email list, we have about we have about a 28% open rate. And for email um, mailing lists, that's actually about three times the average. Mm -hmm. um, my question um, for, for you is, since we have the email, but people don't have access, what other way should we be thinking about outreach? Um, we now have a full-time outreach and partnerships manager. His name is Naftali David. Um, he's been, you know, trying to kind of rebuild that um, community presence. So he's been, he started going to like different meetings. I think a couple of you have met him in person. Um, he's been attending some of the community job fairs and, you know, sharing information and everything like that. It's still in the early stages, but those are the initial things he's doing to kind of start to rebuild that presence. What other things can you recommend that we could do to start building that presence again and you know, creating a, um, alternative funnels besides just the email? You're, you know, Nikki, you're, we're on the same page also. There are centers of influence that we can actually reach out to that will actually also basically um, do a multiplier on the outreach. If we can determine who those centers of influences are, okay, we can actually then actually have a, a much better response to the outreach and allow more people to have access to these potential jobs at the, at, at the Navy Yard. So I, I, we're on the same page on that. Um, if you could actually send me the information of this individual also, because I believe mm -hmm. that myself, Ms. Peterson, other members of this committee and board would be interested in seeing who that individual is so we can do the outreach directly to him also. Can I just make a point, a quick point? It, I, 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 um, I, I think the way, the way information can get out you know, is as it was done before, just for a point of information, is that if, if the community board office gets it, the community board members get it, everybody have that's that's an opportunity to help spread the word. The Tenant Association in Farragut, the Church of the Open Door downtown Brooklyn, um, on Gold Street, uh, the Navy Yard Boys and Girls Club is now closed. Um, Ingersoll to a resident association, Whitman resident association. So I'm assuming that all of those pieces of information are still within the data bank 
at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So if that is so, then of course, that's a, a good start, you know, right there. And everyone can help with getting that information out. Just, just the people I named, which was often the same ones um, that was helping with getting the word out before. But if we don't know, if I don't know, I can't share it with anybody. Things that I get, I always post and 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 forward by mail, so people can be aware, share it with other people in the church, and that sort of thing. So that is the thing that can help. Um, so if that still exists in terms of that information, then we can go with that. If not, then we should try to help you to build that back up somehow to to make it work. Thank you. Yes, Denise. Uh, we're on the same page. Ethan, I see your hand raised, but I also want to point out that our uh, in the chat, uh, we just actually have said, if you need additional help with tenant association meetings, uh, we'll be more than happy to give you the list uh, and also times of those meetings. Okay. Very helpful. Okay, Nikki. Uh, Ethan, you. I see your hand raised. Yeah, yeah please, I just on. wanted to uh, and touch and then let's uh we I want to move to the next one and sorry if there's a delay here um because I'm experiencing it as well um on Ms. Peterson's last point I think we definitely still have those connections um we're really excited about Nikki being here Naftali being able to build out those networks continuing to get hands as you said into uh community change makers you know people who really are connected in um so we never lost that but we did I would say like you know um folks who work in government know there was a great resignation across this country, um, but a lot in New York City. And so we are rebuilding now. Um, so we we certainly, um, we're really looking forward to that. And um, I'm excited to do that on my side. And then Naftali um, is gonna be great. He's already doing that work. And uh, we're really excited for you all to introduce him to those folks that, that you know um, can really help us amplify um, and then uh, just one point on Mr. Flanoy's note about um, employers outside the yard. There was that um, we were another thing that COVID canceled on us, killed on us was that career fair. And so that's something that, you know, down the line, we definitely like to to work with you. I know you were bringing private employers and we were bringing community members um, and folks from the yard that we could work with. So um, just another area for us to re-engage here. Okay. Uh, yeah, Ethan, we'll we'll take a look at that also because that was something that we were interested in doing also. I noticed that you had a uh, what was it? You had a fair of a type. I just missed that. I believe it was a couple months ago, if I recall. We did. Um, we did it in, in partnership with Bedside Restoration. Yes, exactly. So we like to see more of those things occur because that actually gets the word out and actually helps individuals uh, find jobs. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, I have another question. Okay, uh, in regards to the fellowships. You mm -hmm. mentioned, okay, that 59 uh, of the businesses hosted internships mm -hmm. uh, in the yard. Why only 59? Was there a reason behind that? So um, companies uh, apply to be hosts. Um, so we, we can't force a company to take an intern. So we put a call out to companies, um, they apply to be a host, and then we review their application, make sure they're able, capable of being a host for the uh, students and then that's how we get the list of the businesses so if a business doesn't apply we don't place an intern there okay okay that, thank you i wasn't sure how that actually worked thank you uh kate you look like you're about to ask a question <laughs> you're what young <laughs> no okay i apologize uh miss gilman were you about to ask a question no i was gonna say i'm getting it all down we have some good q a though <laughs> okay, perfect. Okay, excellent. Okay, so uh, we had 101 placements, okay, of the 1,350 visitors, okay, which is okay. Okay, mm -hmm. is, there, is there a reason why the placements are so low? So the placements are generated by the job opportunities that are, that are sent to us from the businesses. And so while we did have some businesses move on to the yard, many of the businesses are still recovering mm. um, from COVID and things like that, they're rebuilding. Um, also, these are smaller businesses. And so, like for example, a Wegmans will hire hundreds in one shot because it's Wegmans. But like a smaller business that has like 15 people may only hire one or two people over the course of the year. Layer into the fact that people are still bouncing back from COVID, 
that we still feel that effect, especially because these businesses are so small. Um, so I think that contributed to it as well. And then also, I'll be honest, um, there is a bit of a skills mismatch, which is one of the reasons why we want to do more of our um, um, our training. So a lot, a lot of what we're seeing, we're seeing a lot of business support services roles for companies. So we're seeing a lot more requests for accountants, production managers, operation managers, and everything like that, which actually bodes well, because that means that companies either are sensing a growth opportunity here. And so like leaders are offloading some of the more routine stuff into a position rather than owners trying to do everything themselves. Um, but those require a different skill set. We also are seeing more requests for technical roles like C and C. And so that's not a role that if you don't have the if you don't have the certifications and experience, you can't do that role. Um, these roles also tend to be the better paid roles on the yard. Um, just looking historically at some of the placement, um, I think one of the reasons why, even though we have less placements, but a high but we're seeing growth on the wage is because we're, we honestly are getting less of those $18 an hour roles and more of the 22, the 25, the $75,000 a year roles and stuff like that coming in. So we're trying to figure out the best way how to balance that out. Um, one of the things I think um, is gonna be very key in the survive opinion on college students is that um, we have a lot of college students in the housing developments and things like that, but those are not oftentimes the students that are referred to us, and those are not oftentimes the students that are outreach to because people assume that everything's okay for them because they went to college. Having worked at CUNY, I know those students um, struggle connecting to the quality jobs just as much as the person who didn't go to college. And so, since they are, since we have companies that are looking for a certain level of education. Um, skill sets that many of them have, going deeper and targeting out the college students who are living in the housing developments with their families, letting them know about the opportunities that on the yard as they graduate, I think is a great opportunity that can be overlooked sometimes. Okay, fair enough. Uh, one of the things uh, I was curious also, you mentioned it, the CNC, okay, mm -hmm. that training. Okay, you're about to do another uh, training, I believe you said in uh, late August, early September. Okay. So we have the CNC, we started, the fourth cohort has already started. Mm -hmm. um, and then over the summer, we're gonna do, well, late summer, early fall, we're gonna do um, the AutoCAD CAM, which is the computer software part of that. And then mm -hmm. we have the cohort of CNC. Okay, so it's one, two, it's a one, two yeah. program. Okay, so, so yeah. the next program won't start, the next cohort won't start till spring of next year. Um, yeah, we're, we're looking at spring, we'll see how the, um, AutoCAD can falls. If that falls a little bit early for us and we're able to do it, then we might shift the um, CNC a little closer. Okay, no problem. Uh, Tay, I see your hand raised. Where am I? There I am. Hi, Nikki. Um, Hi. I personally find CNC incredibly fascinating and exciting, and I wish more people knew what is possible. And I wonder how many folks that are not already trained in CNC understand that this is really the modern, like bleeding edge of modern manufacturing, right? Um, are, will Navy Yard be offering any uh, tours or info sessions ahead of that application opening? Because I wonder if we could help you get some young folks that have never heard about CNC onto the site to see what it is, maybe that would help generate some excitement for applications. Oh, we have a ton of excitement for applications. <laughs> <laughs> because, because this is a technical class um, and we're limited, believe it or not, by space. We don't have as much training space ah. as we like. Um, we, had, we took 13 applicants this time around from a pool of like over 50. So um, there's definitely a lot of interest. But to your point, um, one of the things that we are revamping because we, again, want to connect better with the community is our like infra our info sessions and actually creating a workshop about working on the yard um, so that people can get a sense of what are the types of jobs on the yard. Because I think a lot of times, a lot of people who come to the yard immediately think of warehouse, labor maintenance, um, all of those types of things. 
Um, but there's CNC, there's electrician and carpentry roles um, that are here. There are construction roles that are here. Um, then there are like the other cool stuff. Like we have a company here that makes spacesuits for NASA. Like there's so many different things on the yard. And I agree, I don't think people know that those things are available and that are here. The yard also offers a great opportunity for career advancement. Um, a lot of people um, in the surrounding neighborhoods, they have jobs. And I think historically Sorry. people only have thought about, you know, job placement from the perspective of like either the unemployed or the underemployed. Um, I take a more broader view. Um, if there's somebody who has skills that are maybe making $20 an hour and can bring them to the yard and get $5 more an hour, we should be encouraging them to come to the yard and get the $5 more an hour. Um, we will always have rapid attachment jobs, which send to $17, $18 an hour. But if we can also help someone raise their living standard by, you know, leveraging skills that they're picking up and the job that's not on the yard and bringing it to the yard, I absolutely want to have that career advancement piece there. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, uh, our, our board chair, uh, sorry, you <laughs> actually knew exactly what path I was going down. So I appreciate that. Okay, Taya. Okay. Okay, because I was going to say too. With, well, Latrell, by all means, by all means, you have a question, Trell, please ask. Hi, I have a question. Hi, Nikki, welcome tonight and welcome to the Navy Yard. My question is, what's the percentage of um, individuals out of 90, the 90 students come from um, Fort Greene and Farragut? Do you have a percentage? So I can get that for you. Um, I, could, I could see um, how many of them list themselves. So I believe they have to self-declare um, if they live in NYCHA housing. So I can see um, how many um, self-declare um, if they live in NYCHA housing. We don't break it down by housing development. Um, and the same thing goes for um, candidates. Um, they self-declare whether they're in NYCHA housing. So I can get the information. What what about as far as the zip code 11205 and 1101? That's our community board district zip codes. I can, I can run those zip codes for you. I don't have the information right now because we are still in the process of doing the placements and everything like that. I could probably tell you how many applications we got. I can't necessarily tell you right at this moment how many of the current summer interns will fall from those zip codes since they're still being interviewed and everything. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Nikki, I, I think pretty much we've asked you quite a few questions already, okay? But but do me a favor, please. Um, when you respond back, because you're gonna be responding back to our district uh, district manager, okay? Uh, Taya mm -hmm. Lola. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that, I'm so, I, I wanna work with that a few more times, okay? <laughs> district manager. <laughs> okay, when you send her that information, could you also send her uh, the list of um, the uh, the city funded programs that you're working with also, so we can also see if we can actually reach out to them or when we do our district statement of needs, emphasize that we'd like to see more funding going to them. Okay. okay. Um, I'll double check. I don't think, I think, I don't think outside of SYUP, we currently are actively working with them uh, after the last city um, programming around workforce, but I'll just double check because again, I'm new. So yeah. Right, and you're you're just starting up the front-facing part of the, the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So there may be some things that we can actually work with together to actually start them up. Okay, awesome. Okay. I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. Okay, and Nikki, uh, if it's at all possible, uh, I'd like to actually have an opportunity to have the officers of the committee, if, if they're willing to, sit down with you and actually have a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm happy to do that. Um, so Ethan has been really great. Um, and helping me identify, um, you know, different places where I can go be one-on-one -on -one with people or different meetings and things like that. So however you guys want to schedule it, I'm happy to do that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Nikki, for your time. I do appreciate the information you've given us. It's been very helpful. Okay. And hopefully we can be, it can then be responded in such a way, reciprocated so that we can be very helpful for you also. Okay. And just to clarify, um, Latrell, um, you want me to run the numbers of uh, the application numbers for the community board zip codes specifically, just those two zip codes? Yeah, I was curious about um, the community board zip codes. Okay. Thank you. Not a problem. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, you'd be more than happy to stay for the, oh, Ethan, thank you also. Okay, <laughs> Ethan plus one, that's beautiful. Okay, I love that. Uh, the two of you, the three of you, I'm sorry, are more than happy to stay for the rest of the committee meeting if you wish. <laughs> thank you so much. We'll see, we'll see on the other side, uh, folks. Thanks so much. No problem. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Bye. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, now we're on to item number six, the chairperson's report. Um, what I'm going to say basically is this. Um, lately, we've been focusing on one issue, and I'd like, like to start to expand that, uh, the cannabis issue. For right now, that is not something we're going to be looking at because we're waiting for a response back on uh, what they're looking for as far as... Uh, Taya, what are we looking for from the uh, cannabis industry, okay, as far as the regulations are concerned? Do we have an idea where we're going to see that? Um, I don't know what you mean. I, I, I would say the mo more important issue is that there, there have been no applications for our district yet. Oh, well, that's wonderful, but there seems to be a <laughs> lot of cannabis stores open in our district. Yes. <laughs> so on that issue, the office hears that issue quite a bit. And unfortunately, all we can do, because we are not an enforcement entity, all we can do is refer to the enforcement entity, which, at least in this case, OCM has a specific enforcement office. So not only should, so I have been counseling folks that write to the district office to report to three entities, to 311, the 311 portal direct, now directs to the OCM enforcement office. Um, and your local precinct, right? Because you, it, that's both city and state. So when you report it to the city, they can come. They can come out when the precinct can come out that day. Um, when by reporting it to the state level to the OCM enforcement office, that means that that address is getting tagged as a bad operator who has been operating illegally, and OCM assures us that that will count against them in any future application for a legitimate license. Mm, okay. Yeah, I was wondering because we're, um, I believe they're still working on their legislation as far as um, the city, uh, sorry, state level about cannabis. Is that correct? Um, well, that's a broad question. So there are what, 16 different type license types. So there's a lot of stuff in flux. I keep scanning it on, it's, it's sort of weekly now as so it's not as ur quite as urgent. Um, the, the thing that I'm scanning for that's most relevant to the board is if there are more licenses issued for Brooklyn, for Kings mm -hmm. County, um, and then scanning to see if we specifically, if our district specifically gets any applications for any addresses. Okay. But that hasn't happened yet. Okay. Thank you very much. I was just curious. Anyway, what I would yeah. like to do as a committee is start moving away from that because there are other things that I want to focus on also, such as jobs, economic development, things along those lines. So um, in addressing that, um, currently right now I've been working with some of the um, uh, bids, okay, discussing with, uh, currently right now I'm focused on downtown Brooklyn partnership and I'll be looking at from the other bids. If any of the committee members would like to help me out with this, actually reaching out to these uh, actually going to some of these meetings, I'd appreciate that. Um, I would coordinate with a district manager uh, to help lighten your load also, if that was at all possible to actually go to these different meetings. Bill, can you hear me? This is Kate. Yes, Kate. I can definitely jump in with the Atlantic Avenue bid. I'm a member of that, so I'm happy to coordinate. Okay. Excellent. And Kate, by the way, just out of curiosity, have you been able to attend any of the other uh, issues with Atlantic Avenue, the committee the meetings that have been going on with that with development? Yeah, I'd love to, to sidebar on that offline. There's been some um, a bunch of new stuff happening with the Atlantic bid that I feel like is going to be relevant to our committee. Okay, beautiful. That's what I thought also. Definitely. Okay, yeah. excellent. Okay, thank you, Kate. Uh, we'll do that no sidebar. Problem. Okay, excellent. Perfect. Um, and basically, that's my uh, chairperson's report. I will be looking to do other outreach that I think is very important. Okay. But uh, if any of us can actually attend any of these meetings and then report back to the, the actual committee itself so I can report back to the board, I would definitely appreciate that. 
Okay. Uh, next, other committee business. Um, I tapped a little bit, but if, does anyone in the committee or the board have anything that uh, the committee believes that we should be doing? Ramona, uh, do you have? No problem. Ramona, do you have your hand raised, or are you just adjusting your? Yeah, we can't hear you, Ramona. Oh there no, you. I was just reading the chat in the chat, the information in the chat, and my finger just goes okay. over. <laughs> thank you. Okay, no problem. I, was, I just want to make sure you weren't raising your hand. That's all. Okay, thank you, uh, Miss uh, Taya. <laughs> <laughs> Works. Um, I, I'll just share because I this. Mitty has always been so proactive about CD needs. Um, we have finally gotten confirmation, a commitment that DCP is going to be working with the community boards to start the process earlier. So we had our first coordination meeting. What day is it? It's only Monday. It must have been yesterday, uh, which is uh, several months earlier than in previous years. Um, the portal is going to be open for us to go into, and so I can just start doing all of that back end organizing for the board um, starting in June, which is fantastic, instead of waiting until September. Um, expect, as every year, expect some process changes. I will try to make it as light as, and clear as possible. Um, but this committee could, could uh, schedule some agenda time to talk about that next, in June, since that'll be your last meeting before recess, if you'd like. I think that'd be a good idea because traditionally That's we've great. always had a, a sorry, a uh, bid uh, round table. And well, I don't had it once. <laughs> <laughs> we actually had it twice, twice, twice. Okay, but we haven't um, had it. I, actually, your June meeting is great. So the, the fund for the city of New York uh, has an, is a non private public partnership that uh, provides graduate level interns by application to community boards every year. I didn't even tell you guys this, but I applied for one. We had one, I've been working with him for us the last semester. Um, his project was actually on waste containerization systems. So um, his project plan, and I don't wanna spoil it because he's actually gonna be your featured speaker next month. His project plan started by interviewing the executive directors of all of our bids. Mm. and talking to them and doing site visits of all of the bids that have had uh, the city bin waste contain anti-rat proof waste containerization pilot projects. Um, so some of you may know, I don't, I don't want to spoil his report, but um, some you've probably seen there's a company called City Bin started by a couple that lives in Brooklyn Heights, actually. Their original pilot was with Montague Bid but they decided to do their first pilot in Times Square, which got a lot of press for good and bad reasons. Um, they pulled back a bit and have been working on new prototypes. Um, anyway, this fellow Jed is gonna give you, he has done an, a very impressive report. It was 40 pages last, I saw, last draft I saw, um, complete with visuals and really good data analysis. Um, so I thought that this committee, um, just timing really, it, it wouldn't fit into the general meeting, but. He'll be a great speaker for you next month. Not a problem. And we'll talk offline about the other issues that I might want to bring up later on as far as scheduling. You know, we've had a lot of things on the agendas for all the committees, so I totally understand. The bids, the bids are going to be invited to come see Jed's presentation next month, too. Oh, they will. Excellent. Thank you very much. That'd be great. Okay. Um, is there any other committee business to, uh, up for discussion? Ms. Peterson, do you have any? Uh, Nothing. Okay. Okay. With that, we'll go to a community forum, uh, which is item number eight. Is there anyone uh, in the community that would like to speak on any issues that they would like to discuss? Okay. Seeing and hearing no communities, uh, individuals who wish to speak, uh, I will now go to item number nine. Motion to adjourn, <laughs> Ms. Peterson. Okay, uh, can I get a second? We can stay here a little longer if you want. <laughs> second, second. <here. laughs> thank you, Kate. Okay, with no that, problem. thank you very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day.
it is not raining, which is a good sign. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Have a great night, guys.